Let's break down and explain all seven super troops so that you know how to use each of them and give you an idea as to which one you should boost up. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Juno Sloth. Previously in my Tip for Everything series, we brought you a tip for every super troop. But with the release of the Super Archer, I have had a number of comments to update the video. So I will be using some of the other footage, but I will be updating it with all seven super troops explained. Because I like to bring you educational but entertaining Clash of Clans videos. So if that's the type of content you want to see, I would recommend subscribing and also turning on the notification bell. Now, if you do want to support me in game you can do so by using code judo within your settings before making any purchases it is much appreciated my friends but let's kick this one off with the super barbarian now the first thing to mention when we start discussing the super barbarian is that some super troops are better than others and the super barbarian it is not one of my favorites however it can be relatively good for funneling your troops they have the enraged bonus you can get down buildings very easily on the outside the super barbarian costs five housing space and similar to the raged barbarian of the builder base its special ability is being enraged however it is only for eight seconds but this makes it ideal for sniping off defenses on the outside of the base. And another beautiful thing about the Super Barbarian is that you can send multiple of them in. It is not like the Baby Dragon where if they get too close, they lose their enraged bonus. The Super Barbarian can chug away irrespective of how many you deploy. But this is where the issue lies. You can only unlock one super troop at a time and I rarely recommend the super barbarian. Yes, if it is the only super troop that you can actually unlock, then it might be of benefit. But whether you are farming, whether you are doing war attacks, generally speaking, as you will see, as we move through the video, there are better options. The other added benefit of the Super Barbarians is because they don't lose their enraged bonus when they are together, unlike the Baby Dragon troop, you can use them in a mass format. So many of you might have seen my 56 Super Barbarian attack strategy. If you missed that video, I will link it at the end of this one. But it's a really fun attack. You can get a good group of Super Barbarians into the center. They keep their enraged bonus for a good amount of time. And you can still then use a lot of your other Super Barbarians on the outside of the base, as we mentioned for the first technique, because they're very good at funneling. However, if you do have a lot of the other super troops unlocked, it might be that if you're just using super barbarians for funneling, you can actually use a different super troop to a better benefit and use a regular super troop for funneling. And my personal favorite, we will get to it, is the super wall breaker. However, let's move along to the super archer. Now the Super Archer is still very new, but I will give you the best uses of it, which is obviously utilizing its huge range. It can shoot for 10 tiles, which can actually outrange majority of defenses. It can fire through buildings, much like the Electro Dragon's chain, but it does have a housing space of 12. So it is quite costly. However, it can reap high rewards if you can very carefully plan on a base where you would use the super archer to potentially snipe off a pretty significant defense then it can be of huge benefit so for example this situation sniping off a scatter shot now it's important to note that if you are firing through one single building you would not be able to snipe off the town hall or the eagle artillery but you could actually combine an earthquake or a lightning spell or multiple super archers at different angles think about the troll style bases where you have the town hall and a lot of storages to try and make sure that there is a lot of HP around that area, you might be able to take out Teslas with balloons and then snipe off the town hall with some super archers firing through multiple storages, getting creative, but most definitely the best use of the super archer is to snipe buildings. So I obviously gave you an example there of how you might be able to use a couple of super archers in order to fire through and take a building, 
But again, it's very situational. This is where the Super Archer, I think, is more geared towards war attacks, where you can really plan things out. Multiplayer will be difficult. For example, in a realistic base, you might be able to hit an Archer Tower, but if the building before it goes down, then the Archer will retarget meaning they are very difficult to use. And that's where I think the 12 housing space has a huge argument in that it goes down, it's very vulnerable, and therefore it's not worth it. However, in my opinion, I don't see it being a hugely used troop, but it's one where in war, you might be able to use it for a huge value. For example, if you could snipe off one of the defenses we talked about with 12 housing space, then it is most definitely worth it. So I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think the Super Archer is one of the super troops we will use across a wide variety of bases. I do think there are better options which will be explained coming up. However, if you are a Town Hall 11, maybe you only have access to the Barbarian and the Super Archer, your Barbarian's on cooldown, you could use the Super Archer to snipe off some of the resources if you're farming, or we did find an attack strategy coupling them with the Witches, which worked similar to the Super Barbarian one we just explained with the Lightning Spells. I will link this one down in the description as well if you are interested. However, I just want to finish for the Super Archer by saying that I do think it's something that for friendly challenges and friendly wars when we can really plan out attacks and just select the super troop it's not like we have to boost it up it could be of huge benefit if you do happen to find a strong weakness in a base when you can snipe off one of the defenses i do think that's the main use and i do think that is something that for friendly challenge and friendly war you do want to keep in the back of your mind we now move on to the Super Giants, and I have some pretty cool stats and comparisons for you for the Super Giants. But I do want to let you know real quick that if you do need to come back to this video at a later date to see tips for whatever Super Troop it is, I've put video chapters in it for you. So you should be able to skip ahead. There's timestamps in the description as well so that you can easily find it. But the Super Giant is relatively easy to explain in terms of it is a meatier version of the Giant. It's a Super Giant. Now, the regular Giant is 5 housing space. The Super Giant is 10 housing space. But you get more than twice the hit points in a Super Giant. Obviously, you do have to commit the Dark Elixir to it in the first place. So if you are planning a strategy with Giants to push into the base, consider the Super Giants because you will get more than twice the hit points and also they do four times damage against walls. Now, how about comparing this to the Ice Golem? The Ice Golem is 15 troop capacity. Obviously, you get the freezing effect, which is its big advantage, but it actually does not have the same hit points. A Super Giant at maximum level has 4,200, whereas an Ice Golem only has 3,400. So if you are using the troop for tanking specifically, the Super Giant will be your best option. And that's not to mention when it does four times damage against walls. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat to that in that the Super Giants only are attacking defenses. So that means they might go for the wrong piece of wall. And that's where I would advise you to always consider using a jump spell if you do want them to go to a certain area of the base. So we've explained when the Super Giant might be important if you just need it for tanking we've explained that you might have to take jump spells to guide them through the base but what kind of strategy could you use the super giants with well who remembers the hghb attack that's what i found them beneficial with if you can get the super giants and bowlers into the center then you can just easily send hog riders or the royal champion around the outside of the base to cut out the rest of the defenses when you have taken out the core that is what i have found the super giants to be best with but let's move on to one of my favorite super troops in that of the sneaky goblins one of the best uses of the sneaky goblins is to take down the town hall now people will send the sneaky goblins inside a battle blimp to get to the town hall remember the town 
hall is now a storage and the goblins attack resource buildings so they will take it down straight away at higher level even if it is not activated they will attack it but i want to give you tips around the troop composition for the goblins now you may need a rage spell depending on the defenses if you are just farming you can probably just put sneaky goblins in they will take the town hall if you are doing a lava loon attack you can put a lava hound in there with up to five sneaky goblins to take the town hall and you essentially have a free lava hound for your attack but what happens if you see a base with gaps around the town hall what this is is the defender getting wise to the sneaky goblins and putting small bombs there in order to take out the sneaky goblins before they get the town hall you can counteract this with barbarians inside your clan castle in a mixture so you have barbarians the sneaky goblins for the town hall notice how the sneaky goblins can also take the clan castle and the de storage anything inside there but you can take at town hall 13 six barbarians five sneaky goblins three minions and one yeti in order to get brilliant value now the minions are used to distract a scatter shot if it is in the area my good friend eve maxi taught me about that one so the barbarians are for the small bombs the minions are to distract the scatter shot so that the sneaky goblins can take the town hall and you get that star but my recommendation if you are a town hall 13 is to take five sneaky goblins six barbarians three minions and a yeti the sneaky goblins get the town hall the yeti gets good value if the yeti mites the barbarians are to set off the bombs and the minions are to distract any scatter shot in the area so the scatter shots will attack the air troops and that of the minions and miss the goblins many thanks to my good friend eve maxi for teaching me about the minions a couple of other really quick tips for these sneaky goblins before we get to the super wall breakers you can and use them for funneling on the outside of the base if you are attacking the resource buildings now presumably your sneaky goblins are maxed level and you're going up against a regularly upgraded base you will require one sneaky goblin per mine or pump and two sneaky goblins to take out one of the storages also be on the lookout for exposed town halls and clan castles to the side of the base it does happen and you can send in just a couple of stinky goblins to snipe the town hall or the clan castle you are likely to need four to five however i would probably just take five just in case and also have in the back of your mind that there could be traps in that area as well the super wall breakers are without a doubt one of my favorite super troops and one that i would recommend you use for war particularly if you're doing a queen charge they can be incredibly good for me they are on par with the sneaky goblins as the best super troops in the game depending on your purpose whether it be the town hall or to get access into the base be sure to let me know your favorite and if there are any tips you feel i missed for any of the super troops however the super wall breaker it's exactly the same as the regular wall breaker in that it breaks walls but it costs eight troop capacity and this is where it really shines because it will go off irrespective it's very predictable the regular wall breakers you've got to do test wall breakers to make sure they actually get through the layer of wall and there's not a small bomb to take them out with a multi inferno you probably have to freeze the multi inferno otherwise the multi will just take out your wall breakers incredibly easy but the super wall breakers although they are eight housing space they are so much more reliable particularly if you are doing a queen charge so i would highly recommend the super wall breakers on the outside of the base they're a little bit trickier to get in and for eight housing space you probably only want to break two to three layers then think about using the jump spells but they are very reliable and i would highly recommend using them i actually did a video the wall breakers explained which would give you a lot more in depth of how to use them because like i said they're exactly the same in the ai as the regular wall breaker now the inferno dragon is basically a baby dragon with a single target inferno strapped to its back so for that reason you need to use it to its strengths against high hp buildings and i had a couple of really good examples of the best tips for the inferno dragons in my reveal video so i'm actually going to use that footage because the examples were great and perfectly aligned to this video 
Now, I think there are two very clear, fantastic uses for the Inferno Dragons. The first one being having them in your defensive clan castle. This might cause the queen's ability to be burned, but think about as well if the queen was also getting damaged by the defenses. Irrespective of the amount of defenses though, you are going to have to commit something to the Inferno Baby Dragons on defense, even if that is just a freeze spell to reset the charging ability and protect your queen's ability. But if there are a lot of other defenses shooting at your queen, it might be that you need to use a rage spell as well, but you have to consider the Inferno Dragons on defense. The other main use that I see for the Inferno Dragon is to ensure you take out the Town Hall. Now this could be particularly good on ring style bases where you can just focus on taking out the outside and just send a couple of Inferno Dragons into the Town Hall. Now you do have to be careful of black bombs so you might want to send two of them in and also you might have to commit a freeze spell depending on if there's any defenses around. However the Inferno Dragon can indeed get through that Town Hall no problem because it will be able able to do an incredible amount of DPS once it has charged up its attack. Finally, we have the Super Witches. Now, the Super Witches are incredibly difficult to use. They have 40 housing space and they house one big boy. So the big boy is the one single skeleton that is spawned and it is similar in hit points to a super giant. The super witch, although it's 40 housing space, actually does approximately twice the amount of damage as a regular witch, so that is the difference maker. Now, the best example I can give you is of this one from the qualifiers where Eve check was able to take out a max town hall 13 using the super witches the one thing i would say is that the super witches can time fail you have to only take around about four super witches because they are 40 housing space that is 160 in total if you have four of them you need healers behind the super witches to get that value so you are not going to have many troops this is why eve check used a grand warden walk initially in his attack and also has some cleanup troops but the reason that the super witches can be useful in the base itself is if they have a large open space in the core they can actually get in there and tank a lot of defenses. It might be that the scatter shot are very difficult to path to if you are using the yetis and this means that the big boys and the super witches with the healers because you've only got four of them they tend to stand together so you're healing a lot of them together they will be able to tank that scatter shot all day long. A couple of other tips to consider with the Super Witches are that you don't really have to worry about the Giga Bomb at Town Hall 12 or 13 because the Big Boy and the Super Witches, they can get through that incredibly easily. So your Grand Warden's ability can be used in the core. Multi-target Infernos are probably the best thing to go up against, despite that being the worst for a regular Witch. You can get through a single target Inferno, but you've just got to know that that is the case. And similar to what we discussed with the Super Giants and the HGHB, you're using the Super Witches in the core to take out the core and tank everything surrounding the base with Hog Riders or the Royal Champion. That is what has been found to be the best use of the Super Witches so far and the best tip that I can give you. Using them to tank big open spaces where the scatter shots are difficult to get to and you are mitigating the splash because they are massive. They have all of the hit points surround the base with the hogs and the royal champion. So I hope you enjoyed the updated version of this video. If you do want to see the video with 56 super barbarians and the attack strategy, I have it linked on your screen. I'm sure you will enjoy that one because it is an incredibly fun attack and yields three stars. I also have the subscribe button for you but you guys take care and i will see you in the next video